Ah, oh, good evening, everybody. I was just looking at my words that I had for last week. I'm looking for one in particular, because I don't think we did this word last week, but it's an important word. Can you see it? Oh, I'm not, am I live? And it says prehistoric, because the story that we have, the book at bedtime today is the book about dinosaurs that we found out about last week. Um, can you remember my timeline? So this was my timeline. Let me get it the right way around. So we'll do it this way. And this is now 2020. That was when Jesus was born. So that's 2,000 years. That's 3 million years when humans start, started to arrive. And then all this time is going back 65 million years to when the dinosaurs were around. Can you remember that timeline? I got a lot of comments about the timeline. Okay. So the story is about dinosaurs. And the story is set in present day. It's set in 2020. And it's about a boy called Ronan. And last week we found out about how he had to go and stay with his grandma in a house with a big garden and how the garden was all overgrown and he didn't like it. And then he met a friend. He met a tiny little dinosaur called Scoot, a Scootalosaurus. Now this story is mixing real dinosaurs, it's mixing some facts with fiction, with things that aren't true. So it's mixing the two together. We also looked at these things last week. We talked about these being the oldest plants on earth, ferns, one of the oldest plants on earth. And this is what dinosaurs used to eat, ferns, 65 million years ago. And we looked at stones because dinosaurs used to eat, when they were eating all the vegetables, the green things that they had to eat, they also used to eat stones. We know this because we found bits of stones in some old dinosaurs, really old dinosaurs that we found. So those were the things that I showed you last week. And then this week, these things are going to come in the story. Can you see them? Aren't they beautiful? I'm just going to go to live comments because I can't see what you're saying. So these are going to feature in the story. Can anybody tell me what they are? Okay. And dinosaurs. So dinosaurs and feathers feature in the story. It's the same story that I'm going to continue with this week. Okay. No comments so far. I hope there's somebody listening. So I'm going to start with chapter five. We've got a lot to listen to this week, so I hope you're sitting comfortably and ready for the story. Chapter five. So Ronan's at his grandma's house and he's found this new friend. Following Scoot's advice, Ronan did not tell anybody that he'd met this little dinosaur. If his mama noticed that his fear of the garden had decreased, she didn't say anything either. She was more than happy to let him spend some time alone playing in the sandpit or watching the bird bath. Ah, good, I can see a feather. Great to see the comments. Ronan saw Scoot the next day as soon as he was by himself. Hi, Scoot, he said. 
as he positioned himself opposite the dinosaur, being careful not to get too close. Where do you live? Oh, she said, here and there. And she smiled a lazy smile, that's the dinosaur. She watched him sort out his toys and then said, do you not get tired of playing in the same place, doing the same thing? Not really. Would you like to explore? Ronan eyed the little dinosaur strangely. Where? Oh, here and there. There was a pause as Ronan tried to decipher that. You mean... You'll take me to where you live. Not really. Ronan crossed his arms and sat back. I'm not going anywhere without being told where I'm going. Scoot glanced around the garden. Ronan decided that she reminded him of a lizard surveying its surroundings before making a move. I was thinking of visiting a friend I mentioned her yesterday. She lives in the trees, said Scoot. Ronan looked at the larger trees further into the garden. In there, he said. Scoot smiled, yes. Are you afraid? No, said Ronan. Although in reality he was more like petrified, he had never climbed a tree. He felt uneasy just looking at them, as big as giants just wanting to drop down on him. But then he decided that it wasn't really exploring if Scoot knew where they were going. Scoot had been watching the boy. She seemed to realise that a decision had been made. Shall we? she asked with a flick of her head. Ronan followed Scoot into the garden. As they went further in, it seemed to get darker and darker. And the trees seemed to get bigger and older. He wished he could hold somebody's hand. When he started clambering over tree roots, he finally asked, are we nearly there? Yes, Angela replied Scoot and turned towards what must have been the biggest tree around. Wow. Ronan looked up. The tree was so wide, five children could not have circled it had they tried to put their hand around it. Its bark was not smooth, instead it looked like thick knotty ropes and had a maypole made out of it. Its roots looped out of the earth as if it was shooting out feet to walk off on. The leaves were of different shades of green and gold and hundreds of branches shot out. Rather like a ladder, he thought. Scoot reared up onto her hind legs and grasped the lowest branch. Shall we? she inquired. You keep saying the same thing, don't you? snapped Ronan, feeling her rather overwhelmed. Scoot lowered herself back to the ground and looked Ronan straight in the eyes. Do not be afraid. You go first. I will help you from behind. It will be worth it. You'll see. Her eyes were golden, flecked in brown and large for her face. Ronan felt like he might fall into them, considering that they were the eyes of a creature that had lived for millennia. He was surprisingly unafraid, but they seemed to give him courage to climb up the tree. Yes, let's do it, said Ronan, and he grabbed the nearest branch and hurled himself up. It was a long climb and they stopped many times to rest, but Ronan was engrossed in his surroundings. He soon discovered that although Scott wasn't, Scoot wasn't talkative, she did answer questions. So he queried everything he could see. He learned more about plants and animals than he realised possible. And when they were about halfway up, Scoot called Halt. 
Then she pursed her lips and made a whistling sound. Ronan felt both tense and expectant. He had almost forgotten the whole purpose of the climb. He was wondering what kind of creature he was going to see when he heard a scrabbling noise. It was coming from the other side of the tree trunk and then a small face popped around the trunk. Hey, Scoot, said the face in a rather high-pitched, exuberant voice. Finally sprouted wings, have you? Hello, Trix, replied Scoot. I brought a friend, Ronan. Ronan, meet Trix, the Archaeopteryx. Can you see the picture? I don't know if you can see it, of the Archaeopteryx up the tree. Maybe we'll show one in a minute. So Ronan's climbed the tree and he's now met an Archaeopteryx, which is a bird dinosaur. Hi, said Ronan, shyly feeling rather intimidated by the flashy bird-like animal. Are you a dinosaur too? Of course I am, she said. I may look like a bird, darling, but I am so much more. Ronan giggled. He liked tricks. Watching her was like watching a sequined puppet endlessly twirling this way and that. She was also very funny, which was a nice change from Scoot. Can you fly? He asked. Fly? I saw like a kite. I glide through the night. With that, Trix jumped off the branch. <gasps> Ronan gasped. But instead of falling like a rock, she was floating down the branch to a nearby tree. They spent an entertaining time in the tree. Trix regaled them with tales of the past, while the other dinosaurs of the late Jurassic period that lived about 150 million years ago. My friends and I roamed the treetops above their heads. We were safe up here. It was quite the arena, really. Fantastic seats to watch the action below. Action, asked Ronan. He knew a little bit about dinosaurs from his books his mama had brought him. Oh, yes, I remember watching two Composognathus fighting over a friend of mine who was foolish enough to hunt insects in a large log on the forest floor. What happened? asked Ronan. Oh, I just dive bombed them and flapped my gorgeous wings in their stupid faces. <gasps> my goodness, gasped Roland. Ronan, weren't you scared? Not a bit. I've always felt sorry for poor four legged creatures who have to hobble their way about down there. The two Compsognathus were fortunate to get such a close-up view of my colours. Ronan giggled, glancing at Scoot, who had been quiet through this entire story. Scoot rolled her eyes at him. Did you always live in Sri Lanka? asked Ronan, turning back to Trix. Mama said we were too small an island. But no dinosaurs ever lived here. She is right in a way. My first home was far away, but it was a tropical island surrounded by the sea, more or less like what we have here now. The conversation continued. From time to time, Drix darted among some branches, picking at the bark with her little sharp claws to find bugs to eat. Once she often offered Ronan a tasty morsel, which he refused. Eventually, Ronan felt pins and needles in his legs. He had been sitting in the tree for what felt like ages and now. And as earlier, Scoop picked up on his discomfort and said, Trix, it was good to see you, but I think our guest is tired. Now we should go. Oh, don't run off just yet. Wait and see the sun go down. Sun go down? Is it that late? Mama must be worried about me, gasped Ronan. Careful, careful, don't go rushing off down that tree. 
said Trix, as Ronan almost overbalanced in his eagerness to return home. It was really nice meeting you, Trix, said Ronan, as he adjusted his position to descend. Awesome meeting you too, kid, replied Trix. I'll see you on the ground. Safe climb. The climb back down was somehow not as bad as the climb up. Ronan was much more confident and sure-footed. As he was jumping off the land's last branch, he glimpsed something shiny among the fallen leaves. As he bent to pick it up, Trix stopped next to him and said, That's mine, but you can have it. And as he looked more closely at the thing in his hand, Ronan realised that it was a red feather. That's what he found as he was climbing down the tree. Can you see my little red feather? Little red feather. He took it into his pocket and said, thanks. The trip back to the porch was quick. And as he came out of the tree, Mama, he heard Mama calling. He ran to her and gave her a big hug. Darling, where have you been? I woke up and found you'd gone. I got scared for a minute. Just looking at the trees, Ronan replied. That's great. Maybe I should ask Cousin to teach you how to look after the garden and you can put in some new plants, that sort of thing. That'd be great, Mama. After a pause, he asked, how long would it take for the new plants to grow into trees like we have in the garden now? Mama laughed, oh, those trees are as old as your grandma, I think. She turned and led the way back into the house. Ronan looked at the grandma garden and he said, no, he said, they're much older than that. Chapter seven, are you still listening? So now, He's got the little red feather that he's found on his climb back down from the tree and he's put it in his pocket. Where do you think the feather came from? We've just met a flying dinosaur, an Archaeopteryx. You might even see a picture of one. An Archaeopteryx, a red feather. So he put it in his pocket. Let's see what happens next. True to her promise, Mama bought some seeds, pots and gardening tools the next day. Cousin, Grandma's helper, was only too glad to leave aside her jobs for the day and mess about in the garden with Tutti Barber, as she called him. Cousin, why don't you look after the garden every day? asked Ronan innocently. Huh, because I have other things to do. Who's going to cook and clean the house? If I had not been with your grandma for years already, I would have given notice and left years ago. The amount of work I have to do here. It's not like when your grandma was young, when we had three or four people working in the house. Now I have to do everyone's work. Do you come into the garden often, asked Ronan. Ronan, he was wondering if she'd ever seen Scoot only to sweep the front bit. I don't have time to smell the roses. Ronan decided he had better try another question. Did Grandma ever have dogs or cats here? Mama said she didn't. Huh, as if I didn't have enough work with after, uh, without having to look after a dumb animal as well. No, the only animals here are the wild lizards and insects in the garden. Cousin stopped to catch her breath. Look at the time. There'll be no lunch if I keep chatting like this. Tutti, Baba, you can manage to put the rest of the seeds into the earth and water the plants. And with that, she was off back into the house. Ronan worked by himself for a few minutes. And then he saw Scoot watching him. Aren't there enough weeds here already, Scoot said. These aren't weeds, said Ronan. They're vegetables and flowers. Cancun, tomato, bell pepper, green plants, chilies. Mama said we may as well grow something useful. Scoot suddenly cocked her head to her side and disappeared into the bushes. What? Ronan was about to continue when Cousin the maid came back round the corner. 
Judy Bob, are you talking to yourself? No, because I was just seeing if I can remember all the plants, said Ronan. Okay, call if you need anything, said Cusum, and she went round the corner again. Scoot, called Ronan in a loud whisper. Scoot, come back, she's gone. The dinosaur's head poked through the leaves. Yes, I know, she said, that one is nosy. Better make sure she's not around when you try and talk to me. I can move real fast. And it'll look like you're talking to yourself. Right, so what are we going to do today? You go ahead with your work. I'll be nearby. It's too risky to come out with that woman prowling around. And Scoot disappeared again. Can you see Scoot there? That's Scootillosaurus. That's a dinosaur in the story. I'm sure I heard voices, said Cousin. Are you talking to yourself, Judy Barbara? she asked. No, no, said Ronan. How was he to play with his friend if Cousin wouldn't leave him alone? No need to shout at me and all the work I do, said Cousin. No word of thanks from anyone. I only came to say lunch is ready. Thank you, said Ronan. And he walked into the house, feeling upset that he wouldn't see Scoot again that day. Things did not go well for Ronan the following day. Cousin had told Mama and Dada that Judy Barber, Ronan, was talking to himself. And maybe he needed a friend. Predictably, Mother was always worried. And Dada had said, just let the boy be, don't worry about him. But as a result, he found Mother now, Mama, giving him more and more attention. And she took him out of the garden and away from the house to visit all her relatives and friends. Unfortunately, there was nobody nearby his age who he could play with. Usually, he would have loved the extra attention from Mama, but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to play with Scoot in the garden. The neighbour he most dreaded visiting was Mrs. De Silva, same age as Grandma, and she lived with her helpers and a dog, a Pomeranian, a Pomeranian, Pomeranian, special sort of dog, named Spike. Spike was a friendly little fellow, accustomed to a lot of attention from Mrs. De Silva. He was her pet. And she even gave him manicures and pedicures. He had special doggy outfits and he went on trips overseas with Mrs. De Silva. Lucky dog, I'd say. On the day that Rona met him, he had a new hairstyle too. So he scampered eagerly. Ronan doesn't like dogs. He didn't like dogs. They frightened him with his loud yapping. So when he entered Mrs. De Silva's house and encountered this yapping, prouncing, prouncing, pouncing ball of fur, he yelled and clung to his mama's skirt. Go away, go away. He didn't like Spike. What a racket you are both making, exclaimed Mrs. Silva as she tried to catch hold of the excited little dog. Spike, no, leave him alone. Can't you see he's terrified of you? You can make friends later. Leave him alone. There's Mrs. De Silva's dog called Spike in his little outfit. Spike finally calmed down enough to take in what Mrs. De Silva was saying and trotted off to recline in his padded basket. Ronan insisted on sitting on Mother's lap for the entire duration of the stay, which fortunately was quite short. He kept his feet well off the floor, away from the, from the dog, until Spike was back, being held by a maid. Overall, the visit to Mrs. De Silva was not a success. When Ronan got back to Grandma's house, he was still upset. Mama was also worried, 
and kept reassuring him that but he was only a small friendly house dog and not a vicious guard dog he had just met. All Ronan wanted to do was to relax on the porch and forget about the incident. As Mama went back into the house, Scoot appeared. Then Scoot said, Have you seen that scary dog at Mrs. De Silva's house? He asked eventually. Yes, replied Scoot. We went there for a visit today. It was so loud and jumped all over the place. I was so scared, said Ronan. Scoot said, His name is Spike. And he was just actually very excited to meet you. He doesn't get to show off all his fancy clothes and gadgets as much as he liked. Really? exclaimed Roland. How do you know? He can see you and talk to you, can he? Oh yes, said Scoot. I talk to Spike all the time. I wish I could talk to, to Spike. Then maybe I wouldn't be so scared, said Ronan. Well, it's all right to be wary of strange animals, especially dogs. But a little house pet like Spike won't harm you, if you are friendly and don't harm it. Of course I won't harm him, said Ronan. Do you talk to him often? No, not often, but I can if I want to. Do you want to visit him with me? We can have an adventure, like when we met Trix, suggested Scoot. Okay, agreed Ronan, but only if you speak to him first and tell him to behave. The next afternoon, Ronan told his mama he wanted to go back to Mrs. De Silva's. He said he was sh sorry for shouting so much at the dog and wanted to play with it. Mama was surprised. She couldn't believe it. The Ronan was coming out of his shell and trying to have more courage, so she quickly agreed. Roland was still a little bit nervous about the meeting, but Spike greeted him quite calmly this time after being warned in advance by Scoot. After touring the house and admiring Spike's toys and clothes, Ronan asked to play ball outside with Spike. And it was not, not long soon before Scoot appeared. Spike yapped excitedly when he saw the dinosaur. So now we've got Ronan, Spike and Scoot all playing outside at Mrs. De Silva's house. After a boisterous game which Scoot too joined in, the three playmates flopped down under the shade of a jack tree to catch their breath. With Scoot acting as translator, they had a long conversation. Roland told Spike about climbing up the big tree to meet the Archaeopteryx and Spike told of the various holidays he had been on with, his, with Mrs. De Silva. And Spike was so happy to find a friend, he tried to lick Roland's face. The boy gave a shriek and leapt up. Scoot immediately disappeared into the bushes just as Mama around the corner of the house. Ronan, are you all right? she gasped. Oh yes, Mama, no worries. I'm sorry I shouted like that, but Spike licked my face, explained Ronan. I was around the corner anyway, said Mama. By the way, I heard you talking. Do you have an imaginary friend? Uh, said Ronan. I was talking to Spike, the dog, he said finally. He's such a friendly fellow. It's almost as if he can really understand me, you know. Okay, said Mama. However, Ronan could see she was unconvinced. Drat that cousin for nose to sing it first. Luckily, she let the matter drop and they went indoors for some orange juice. Ronan usually went up to bed at about 7.30 p.m. every night and Mama waited until he was fast asleep. But today she had so much on her mind that she did not notice that Ronan was not quite asleep and she quietly left the room. Ronan lay in bed worrying about what had happened. His parents couldn't do anything if he liked talking to himself, could they? He didn't see what all the fuss was about. However, grown-ups think differently and Ronan's parents were talking about the issue. He could hear their voices 
And rather than ignore the sound and go to sleep, he decided to listen in. I'm worried about Ronan, said Mama. His class teacher spoke to me at the end of the door. Apparently, he started wringing his hands all the time. Wringing his hands, said Dada. You know, like this. And she says he's still running to the toilet every 10 minutes or so. I'm getting really worried. He has all sorts of nervous tricks. Well, lucky the teacher is so understanding. You worry too much, commented Dada. And now... He started speaking to himself. Speaking to himself, Dada. That, this is what that nosy woman said. Uh, yes, said Mama hesitantly. But I've been observing a bit more closely than day, these days. And there is some truth in what Kusum says. He does like to spend a lot of time in the garden and talk to himself. Kids talk to themselves when they're playing, said Dada. But not like this, you haven't heard him. He has a proper, real conversation. You can hear it. Maybe he has an imaginary friend, said Dada. I asked him that, but he said he was talking to the dog. In the bedroom, Ronan was in a panic. Were they going to take him to a doctor for talking to himself? He was so anxious he didn't get much sleep that night. However little, he did not know that worse was to follow. Chapter 10. I wonder what's going to happen next. He's met Spike. He's got a friend called Scoot. He's been up a tree and seen Archaeopteryx. Mother's worried about him talking to himself. Cousin the maid keeps telling about him talking to himself. What could happen next? The next few days went by in a blur of strangers in the house and trips to the hospital. Grandma's illness had got worse. Ronan and his parents had moved in to keep Grandma company and look after the house. But over the past week, her health had got much worse. Of course, Ronan didn't know all the details, so he was quite surprised when an ambulance, Nino, 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 to a stop at outside their house. The aunties and uncles in white coat checked Grandma, and the next thing Ronan knew, they were all rushing to the hospital. Ronan was scared. This sudden change in the status had just quite shaken him. He didn't want to believe when his mother assured him that everything would be fine. The race to the hospital seemed to indicate otherwise. Then they spent what much, must have been hours seated in the white walls of the hospital, watching the doctors and nurses bustle about. Ronan had finally fallen asleep, and the next thing he knew, he was being carried into his room back at home. The next day, they told him, Grandma was staying on at the hospital. She had to have some tests and things. Grandma had spent most of her time in bed since her arrival at the house. But Ronan had enjoyed talking to her and playing in her room. What he loved best were her stories. Now the house felt different. Even Cussum didn't chatter to him and complain. Ronan didn't have to lie to his mama when he said he preferred to spend time in the garden. Unfortunately, he was almost never left alone, so he didn't get to speak for many days. Finally, the day came and mama and dada had to return to the hospital, but Ronan said he would be fine at home with Cousin. Cousin had lost her nosiness. So he had the entire garden to walk around him while she cooked in the kitchen at the back. Scoot quickly appeared at his side, soon as Cusum had disappeared. Scoot didn't say anything, but joined in Ronan's walk about. All Ronan needed was somebody who understood him. And looking into Scoot's wise old eyes, he knew he did not have to explain. 
Finally, Scoot broke the silence as they sat under a large tree. Your grandma was not always this ill and frail, you know. I know, said Ronan, there's a photograph in the hall. When she was younger, said Scoot, this garden was beautiful. Everything was planted in its place for a reason. Of course, there were many gardeners to do the work, but she got her hands dirty too, digging and pruning. How did you manage to stay hidden then, asked Ronan. Scoot smiled. Oh, there are ways. Humans are not the most perceptive. They tend to ignore everything they can't explain, and I was very careful. But I saw you, said Ronan. You children are not like grown-ups. You are more curious. And you have not lost your imagination. There are some children who convince themselves I was just a dream. Your grandma, for instance, she used to talk to me as a child. But after some time, she didn't see me because she convinced herself I was not real. What, said Ronan, shocked. Grandma knows about you? Yes. And what do you mean she didn't see you after a while? How can you suddenly not see something? Ah, oh, you humans are very good at selective sight, said Scoot. I will never forget you, said Ronan. We'll see, whispered Scoot. She disappeared into the foliage and Ronan turned to face the driveway because he could hear and see his parents were back. That afternoon, evening after dinner, Mama sat with him in his room and told him the bad news. Grandma would not be coming back home. She was too ill and needed nurses to look after her. So she was moving into a nursing home. Ronan was shocked. It was all too much for the small boy and he started to cry. Don't worry, sweetheart, nothing bad has happened to her. Just a change of place. And it's a place where she'll be better looked after, said Mama. And I haven't even got to the good point, to the good bit. We'll be able to move back to Colombo to our apartment. And Grandma, Grandma's nursing home will be quite close by and you can visit her every weekend. Ronan looked at Mama's smiling face. This was not good news for him. But he could not explain to her how attached he had grown to this old house. I don't want to go back to the city of blurted out. I want to stay here. His frustration at the situation led to more tears and he did, did something he had never done before. He said to Mama, go, leave me alone. He cried himself to sleep while Mama waited outside the bedroom door. His parents tried to make sense of this later. I thought he hated this house, said Dada. Remember how we couldn't even get him out into the garden? I know, said Mama. But looking back, he has been more settled here. He spent a lot of time in the garden and with Cousin. And I've heard them talking stories. Maybe the garden is what he needed. What about the conversations with himself? Maybe this change came just at the right time. Ah, oh. see, I said, said Dada, you worry too much. It was Cousin who informed Ronan of the fate of the house. It was her who he found sitting on the back step, chewing beetle, the next day at the time she would have usually been cleaning the inside. He didn't even ask her to have to ask her for the reason, because the moment she exclaimed, Hi, Judy Barber. Have you heard? They're going to sell the house. And they're going to send me away to a home too. It was all too much for Roland. What was all he managed to say? After all that I've done for them, all the years of where I've laboured away in this place just to get rid of me like old, old furniture. I'm sure Madam didn't have a say in this. I'm sure it's the rest of the family waiting to get their hands on the money. 
she broke off as she realized she was ranting to a five-year-old and there's a picture of grandma's house that they're going to sell and you can see the trees in the garden the trees where Rona met Scoot. Ah, Rona Tame took advantage of the silence to say, who's selling the house? Why, your parents, that's who. No one wants to live here. Your uncle is abroad, your grandma is going to her home and your parents want to go back to Colombo, so there's no one to stay here. With that, Cussum shuffled back to the rear end of the house, wiping her tears away with the end of her skirt. The stunned silence she left behind was broken by the arrival of Scoot. Ronan sat there in tears. Oh, Scoot, what are we to do? Mama and Dada are going to sell the house. What will happen to you and to Trix and the old trees in the garden and the bird bath we put up? If Scoot had had longer arms, she would have put them round the boy in a hug. But being as they were, all she could say was, Don't worry about us, Ronan. We have survived 65 million years. We will continue as we have all this time. Ronan peered up at her through wet lashes. But I'll never see you again. That may be, said Scoot. But I am not bound to live in this one garden. Although I have been here for a while, we will, perhaps it is time to move on. Perhaps we will see each other again someday, but enough of that. I'm sure your parents are not leaving the house this very afternoon. Come on, let's walk around and enjoy the garden. Maybe a game of hide and seek. Her efforts at cheering him up worked, and Ronan seemed to put the bad news, the bad news to the back of his mind. They played hide and seek, looked at the garden and eventually Ronan was too tired to do much more than lie down under the shade of a large mango tree. Although he had just about forgotten the situation, the change to come was continuously before him in the next few days. People kept coming to the house, dropping in to see the house. His mother gave him the job of showing them around. He showed them around the garden. Since that was his own, Scoot stayed away and Rhoda wondered if that was going to be the very last time he had seen Scoot all together. And I didn't even say goodbye, he told himself. Things brightened up a little when his parents told him he was going to visit Grandma at his new nursing home, at her new nursing home. They said she was worried about him and had insisted that they brought Ronan along. Ronan was eager to see her too, not only for the obvious reasons, because he missed her, but he wanted to ask her about Scoot. It was a long drive back towards Colombo. Ronan was quiet, spending time watching the trees through the car window. He was thinking how he was going to ask Grandma. First, he'd have to make sure that Mama and Dada were not in the room. He needn't have worried on that account. So, since as soon as they entered Grandma's room, she said, Oh, my darling boy, I have missed you so much. No one here is quite as willing to sit and listen to my old stories. Then she turned to Mama and Dada and asked them to give a little time together. Ronan seized the opportunity and after answering a few questions on how he had spent the time and how Cousin was, he tentatively said, Grandma, I have met an old friend of yours. Oh, said the old lady. Yes, she said, the friend said, she hasn't seen you since you were a girl. Grandma was now intrigued. She tried to remember all her old school friends who were still around, who may have dropped in to ask after her. Yes, she prompted. Ronan said, she was quite sad that you had forgotten about her. 
that you had left her alone. Grandma was now hooked. She could not figure out who this mysterious figure was. Ronan, tell me, who did you meet? Scoot, said Ronan. He was confused. Scoot? She couldn't think of any friends of that name. That's a very strange name. Is she a foreigner? You could say that, said Ronan. She never really told me, but I don't think she's from around here. Yes. Grandma, how can you forget? Scoot is a Scootalosaurus, a dinosaur. She lives in your garden. She says you used to play with her. But then when you grew up, you ignored her. Grandma was looking at him in shock. Ronan's parents had informed her of this habit of talking to himself and she had told them not to worry. However, now she wasn't so sure if it was the best advice given the situation. Daring her thought, she said, Is this the friend you have been talking to? Yes, said Scoot. Yes, Scoot is my best friend. She taught me loads of stuff. And I've climbed the gigantic tree in the middle of the garden and met tricks. And Scoot also helped me to make friends with Spike next door. Wow, that sounds really interesting, Ronan, said Grandma. She wasn't sure what to say. Ronan seemed to sense that things were not going as planned. Grandma didn't seem to remember Scoot and she was looking a little bit concerned. Oh no, he thought, I hope she doesn't tell Mama and Dada. Luckily for him, Grandma was not one to make hasty decisions. She said, come here, sit on the edge of the bed and tell me more about your adventures. Relieved, Ronan talked as he had never talked before. He'd been dying to share his story with someone from the first day he had met Scoot. And now the words tumbled over each other as he shared his secret with Grandma. And as he spoke, Grandma too was mesmerised. She listened to this usually shy little boy speaking with such enthusiasm and with a huge smile on his face and twinkle in his eye. Then a miraculous thing happened. From some deep dark place in her memory, an image surfaced. She did not know if it was just a mind responding to Ronan's description, but suddenly she could see Scoot. She could smell the call of the ancient trees and she could hear the cat-like voice that was soothing and kind and not scary. Ronan, who was watching Grandma, realised that something remembered and he said, you do remember her, don't you? You do. I can see it in your face. Grandma didn't know what to do. It was also impossible to believe. A dinosaur in her garden, one that she had spoken to and played with a child. Scoot said, you forgot about her as you became bigger. Maybe it's only children who can see her, said Ronan hesitantly. Yes, darling, that is entirely possible, Grandma. That is entirely possible. Grandma was still preoccupied with trying to sort out her memories. Then look here. I bought you something special, continued Ronan, taking out the Archaeopteryx feather he had carefully stored in his backpack. I got it from Trix. She's the one who lives in the big tree. Remember? Grandma was speechless as she looked at the bright feather glistening in Ronan's hand. It caught the light in so many unusual ways. The colours were so strong and seemed to melt into the other that she could, couldn't quite figure out where one began and the other ended. Hesitant, she put out her hand and took it in her soft fingers. It didn't feel like the silk she had ever touched. It was both grainy and silky. She lifted it to her face, closed her eyes and trailed it across her cheek. Rona watched Grandma playing with a feather. He was too scared to even breathe too loudly in case he broke the spell. He wanted her to remember to say that she had met Trix too. He sat on the edge of the bed like he had been turned to stone. After what felt like endless hours, Grandma opened her eyes. 
Rona thought she looked different. It took him a moment to figure it out. She looks like she did in the old photos. In the photos above the piano, he thought. Grandma's eyes were bright with tears. She held out an arm and enfolded the little boy in a hug. Yes, she whispered. I do remember. Scoot and tricks in the garden, as it was. I do remember. Drawing back, she looked him in the eyes. Thank you, she said, for bringing all this back to me. This is just the medicine that the doctor ordered. Brandon didn't quite understand that one, but he was so happy that his plan had worked. He was so excited he did not even feel the pins and needles running up and down his stiff legs. He hopped off the bed and danced a little jig, waving the feather like a flag. The grandma laughed. The boy's joy was infectious. Here, he, she said, I feel well enough to walk to the chair by the window. No, no, she continued as Rona moved towards the door. Don't call for help. Just give me a hand. The chair by the window was where Ronan's parents found them when they walked in a little while later. They were surprised to see the frail old lady seated in the armchair, talking animatedly with a little boy who was perched on a stool. Ah, there you are, she exclaimed when she saw them standing by the door. We were wondering if we should ask the nurses to go look for you. Ronan is hungry, and so am I for that matter. Shall we all go to the dining room for a meal? Ronan watched with great entrance, with great interest. He had never seen his parents so shocked before. They did not seem to know what to do. Well, said her mamma finally, this visit has certainly been a success, just what the doctor ordered. During lunch, they discussed many things. And Ronan listened anxiously as his parents and grandma talked about selling the house. But I want to live there, he said, when he could not listen any longer. Darling, said grandma, taking his hand, you have told me such wonderful things about your adventures in the garden. It was almost magical. She gave him a special smile and she said, I feel so much better just listening to it all. And when something that amazing, and something is that amazing, the magic will go with you in your heart. It doesn't matter where you live. She kissed his hand. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Ronan thought about that for a minute. Yes, he decided. Scoot had said that he didn't have to stay with that particular girl. So Scoot could turn up in his new house too. He looked up and nodded. Grandma turned to Mama and Dada. And no more talk of doctors or imaginary friends. I think what Ronan needs is a real friend at home. Why don't you get him a pet? Maybe a little dog, like that spike. Mama and Dada were silent. They, didn't, they, they don't look like that, thought Ronan. See, Grandma. I told you they wouldn't agree. He blurt out into tears, threatening to cascade, through tears threatening to cascade down his cheeks. Ronan, can I talk to your parents alone for a minute, asked Grandma. So Ronan left Mama and Dada with Grandma, and he went off to explore the, the nursing home. Grandma turned to his parents. That's a precious little boy you have there. He has a wonderful imagination, but he's alone. Friends at school, school don't always help. He needs something more. I know a pet will be difficult and you will have to find a house in Colombo rather than the apartment, but do it for his sake. I know you're worried about his imagination. Do the right thing now and you won't need doctors. When Ronan returned, Mama took him onto her knee and she held him close and said, So, 
Have you already chosen a name for your new pet? Ronan beamed. He should never have doubted Grandma. She had promised she would take care of everything. And she had. Yes, he said. If I get a dog, I'm going to call him Scoot. And that's the story of Ronan and the dinosaurs. I hope you enjoyed it. Have any of you got imaginary friends? Have you got a dog? Have you got a big garden with trees that you can climb? What a great story. Mixing dinosaurs from the past with the present day. And here's my little feather. I've got some more here. I found these in my garden at the bottom of a big tree and I'm just wondering maybe maybe there's an, an Archaeopteryx at the top of my tree Any more comments today? It's been a long story for you to listen to, a very long story. And we've listened to it over two weeks, which is not easy. Did you enjoy the story? Ginula and Sasath, are you still there? Are you still listening? I can't see any more comments. Long story. Okay, I'm going to finish there. Next week, Fiona will be here to tell you a story. And next week, it's a short story. So there's my feathers from my garden. And I do hope I come back and read a story to you again. Maybe not such a long one. I've got some more great stories. Shame there's no more comments. Maybe the story was too... Ah, no. Ah, here's a story. Scoot was an imaginary friend. Ah, was Grandma lying when she said she remembered? Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm with. I think Grandma really did did see him. Okay. Any more quick comments? It has been a very long story to listen to. I've read ninety pages. And you can get this book from the bookshops by Nadishka Alosius. Uh, Balasami Ruban, very interesting. Uh, any more comments? Has been a long story. Great. Well, I hope you join a book at bedtime next week. Maybe you're all asleep. Maybe listening to it, it was quite late. Ah, Namado Fernando said he likes his story. Do you want us to read long stories or do you like the short stories? Do you want us to read more chapter stories or short stories? We're trying to choose Sri Lankan authors and read stories that are set in Sri Lanka. Okay, maybe I'll sign off here because I need to go. I might go put my feathers back in the garden because I'm going to put the stones back and the fern back and I need to put my timeline away. Maybe I'll put them back and see if there's any more out there. Okay, please join us next week for another story, same time, 6.45, but it will be Fiona who's reading a story. Okay. Good. Bedtime. See you next. Well, I won't see you next week, but somebody else will. Okay. Bye. Good night. <laughs>